the staple that we see in modern textbooks would be the, the geologic column. I think most all biology students are, are very familiar with all the different layers of the earth. But what most college biology students are not familiar with is the fact that, that when this particular column was first introduced, it was based primarily on assumption. 30 years ago, many of those assumptions were blown away, quite literally. The eruption of, of Mount St. Helens, not only was that a, a major impact for the Earth, but it also was a major impact for geology. How different things are formed, like for instance, canyon formation or, or stridal layers. You see, for many, many years, we believe that each one of those layers was put down over long periods of eons of time and in fact, we went so far as to naming the different layers, naming the types of rocks. And yet Mount St. Helens has caused us to, to literally rethink all of that. On the, the screen beside me here, you see a uh, about a 120-foot rock bluff. Sedimentary rock on the top. You can see all the different layers. Now, if you didn't know anything about that particular rock bluff, you might you might buy into the evolutionary hypothesis that, that this thing is millions and millions of years old, and yet everything that we're looking at here was laid down in just a matter of days following the eruption of Mount St. Helens. In fact, we have actual video evidence of, of entire cliffs being built in just a matter of months, years. On the screen beside me, you see a, an individual who is standing at the base of this massive cliff Everything below the first yellow line was laid down in the initial eruption of Mount St. Helens, May the 18th, 1980. There was a, a post-eruption just about a month later that put down everything you see here in the, between the two yellow lines. And then there was another post-eruption about two years later. But the point being, everything that you're seeing was put down in just two short years. You see... We've always approached it at, at this layering effect that it's old, that rocks are old. Let me ask you a question, though. What, what would a young rock look like? You know, it's not like they, they come out wearing diapers. You see, Mount St. Helens quite literally blew our assumptions away. Mount St. Helens that, that taught us another major important thing in regards to, to polystrate fossils. That is, fossils that actually will transcend through several different layers. On the northeast side of, of Mount St. Helens, there's a lake called Spirit Lake. And it's in that particular lake that we find logs just like this one that are, are standing straight up and down. You see, when the, the volcano originally erupted, it washed thousands upon thousands of, of massive timbers down into the lake. They floated around in a log mat. In fact, last year while I was there, there were still more than 30,000 of them floating around the top of that lake. A buddy of mine, Dr. Steve Austin, has done extensive research there. In fact, if you look very carefully, you'll notice Dr. Austin and one of his colleagues there in scuba gear, they've actually taken video evidence, cameras, down into Spirit Lake to, to record exactly what is happening as that area recovers. He shared with me, he said, he said, Dr. Brad, what we're seeing is these logs become completely water saturated. The heavy root end will sink down and they'll bob upright for many, many months before they will finally settle standing straight up. This is actually what he's seeing in the bottom of Spirit Lake. Logs that are, are quite literally standing straight up looks almost like a, an underground forest. Now, as you look at this, please understand this was created not by evolution, not by millions of years, but rather by a catastrophe. And yet, this is precisely what we see in the fossil record. On the screen beside me, you see a, an image it's got five fossilized trees. Now, in order for you to really appreciate it, if you stare really hard here at the bottom, you'll notice there are three men at the base of this bluff. 
five fossilized trees, but what I want you to really focus on is the fact that those trees are going through several different layers. How has that happened if, if the geologic column is, is true? Now, don't take just my word for it. In fact, let me encourage you. Get out and examine the evidence. There's a, a place in Nova Scotia that I was at recently called Joggins. It is it's sitting on the, the Fundy Bay. In fact, Joggins, the Fundy Bay, that is one of the areas. It is the area in the, the world where they got the, the highest tides. It's the quickest. Every single day, the, the tides rush in and they rush back out. But in all of that rushing in and rushing out, what it's doing is it's uncovering lots and lots of, of different things. It's, it's showing us true geology. And so, for instance, you can go there today and you can see trees that are, are quite literally bisecting many of these different layers. Layers that geologists would have us believe are, are put down over long periods of time. But more importantly, at Joggins you can always find polystrate fossils. That is, fossils that, that transcend through several different layers. Now folks, again, if each one of those layers was put down over millions of years, how do you have fossilized trees that go through several different layers? And folks, it's not just in Joggins. We can look quite literally all across the world. And what we see are, are evidence, pieces of, of polystrate fossils, quite literally from continent to continent. And yet, textbooks never record this information. Textbooks are quick, clear, they're quick to tell you about, for instance, the, the Jurassic period or the Triassic period, but they're not as quick to, to actually demonstrate physical evidence that is already in the fossil record. In fact, this particular one says, in Germany, France, the British Isles, Nova Scotia, California, several eastern states, fossils that extend through several layers of sedimentary rock have been found. These are called polystrate fossils. Now friends, every single textbook, biology, evolutionary biology, they're all quick to point out this, this concept of a geologic column. And yet, that geologic column completely ignores the physical evidence. You see, polystrate fossils are real. We can't just set them aside and act like they don't exist because it doesn't fit the evolutionary theory. Maybe instead of throwing out the data, maybe it's time we throw out the theory. You see, folks, it's time to examine the evidence. Visit focuspress.org for all the new updates about Focus Press. You can read articles, order DVDs, and subscribe to our magazine all in the same place. Find us online at focuspress.org.